My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. In you, our ancestors put their trust. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried to you and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm, not a human being. I am scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusted in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me feel secure on my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me, strong bulls from Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions that tear their prey open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me, a pack of villains encircle me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my people in the assembly. I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him, those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim, proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we take a moment to pray. Almighty God, look with loving mercy on your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, to be given over to the hands of sinners and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We sing hymn number 324, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. Sacred 
story gathers round its head sublime when the woes of life overtake me hopes deceive then fears annoy never shall the cross forsake me though it close with peace and joy when the sun of bliss is beaming light and love upon my way from the cross the radiant streaming adds more luster to the day pain and blessing pain and pleasure by the cross are sanctified peace is there that knows no measure joys that through all time abide please rise for the reading of the good friday gospel The Gospel for this Good Friday is recorded in the 23rd chapter of Luke, beginning with the 26th verse. As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the childless, childless women, the wounds that never bore and the breast that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out by him to be excused, executed. <clears throat> when they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. This here ends the gospel. Please be seated. Just last night, we walked the road to Gethsemane. That was a place of prayer. Uh, and after the prayer, all hell broke loose. I think literally. Jesus had said that Satan would seek the hearts of his disciples. Well, the enemy came. The disciples dispersed. Their fear seemed to be greater than their faith. But the story is not complete. With that bit of disclosure and anticipation that something good might be on the way, it's important to see clearly as we read the events of that Holy Week that as the story develops, it seems that everything continues to get worse. Often when we pray, we expect things to get better. Perhaps we ask God to fix things. And sometimes it appears that God does but there are other times that after our prayers, things seem to just get worse. Sometimes are like that, and that is Good Friday. We are confronted with Jesus' death, and in the same moment we are confronted with our own deaths, 
and the deaths of our loved ones. Good Friday reminds us of our mortality. The entire Lenten season begins with the words of Ash Wednesday, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. And so we live with part of that feeling throughout the entire Lenten season. And although Lent is a time set aside for us to grow in our faith, a time for intentional spiritual renewal, it begins and ends with death. We hear the story of Christ's arrest and betrayal, his trial and torture, being abandoned and mocked, and the horrible breathless death on the cross. But tonight we hear Jesus tell us to enter into our own mourning and enter into it deeply, to find our own sorrow, to find our grief, and to know that death really does mean something. And it is painful. And by entering into that death, we walk more closely with Jesus, and we see Jesus walk with us in our times of sorrow and pain. After this message, we will sing a song to that effect, not to distance ourselves from the pain, but we sing, Jesus, keep me near the cross, near the cross. It is the place of death, and we pray that we can stay near. What about that? As we walk with Jesus to his cross, perhaps it stands out in our minds that we all have crosses to carry. Life is struggle and joy. Life is living and dying. Life is unpredictable, and we do not always know how to handle the surprises and some of the surprises we never learn to live with. Holy Week is a week of uncertainty and pain. Last night we walked the Bible road to Gethsemane with Jesus and his disciples. It was a night for betrayal and prayer. Tonight we walk the road to Golgotha, the place of the skull, the place of death, and we walk with the women mourners at the side of the road, and Jesus tells us to mourn for ourselves. Luke 23, verse 28, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. So let's do that. Jesus is walking that road to Golgotha. And if we sing Jesus keep me near the cross. We have to know that there was no one nearer to that cross on the road to Golgotha than Jesus, leaving his skin and blood on those terrible timbers as he dragged it through the street and he heard the cheering crowds laughing, jeering, cursing, spitting, and throwing their hateful, hurtful spirits at Jesus. What a despicable picture of humanity. Absolutely loathsome. The human beast at its worst. But that is precisely why Jesus came. And that is precisely for whom Jesus carried that cross. It was their cross too. They just didn't know it. Jesus told those with open hearts to weep for themselves and their children, the reason we see. All along that road to Golgotha, the depravity, the sin, the ignorance, not regarding Jesus as God. Many hearts are still cold to the Savior Christ. This Lenten season, we have walked many roads of the Bible. The very first road we walked was out of the Garden of Eden, where we learned that at the core of the human heart is the desire to want to be like God. In fact, to want to be God, the God of our own lives, 
Tonight we see that when the real God did walk among us, we could not stand it because he stands in our way. He tells us to love and we would rather create the world in our own way. He takes the abuse and we would rather fight back. He fed the multitudes, but we demand that they work for it. Jesus heals the poor and needy, and we know exactly who he means when he speaks of the least of these people. And Jesus identifies with them, not the religious, not the self-righteous, not the rich and worldly. Jesus identifies himself with the poor. Jesus challenges us. He is in our way. He is in our head. And it is easier to recreate Jesus in our own minds so that he fits our way of thinking, which means we have to get rid of him, the real Jesus, so that he can be raised to the new life of our own choosing. So instead, Jesus let us kill him and he still loves us. Last night we heard Jesus tell his disciples to pray that they would not fall into temptation. Jesus prayed the same thing, knowing that if he were to strike us down as he was tempted, that we could never be raised again. But he fell at the hands of human sin so that he could carry all that sin away. And Jesus just hung there. He didn't say much. He didn't do anything except to die. Jesus went willingly, we are told, as a lamb to the slaughter. The people drove the nails, they flogged him, mocked him, hated him, but that was their only power. Power over someone else's flesh, power to destroy, that is the human power. And as the human spirit showed itself in sin, Jesus gave his life for that sin. Jesus forgave the sinners pleading for them, pleading for their release, pleading for their children with some of his last earthly breaths, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Luke 23, 34. Jesus knew the tragic plight of humankind. He knew we would use our only human power over God to destroy. So he said, weep for yourselves and for your children. He knew we could not stop ourselves and he knew we could not save ourselves either. Death is all we have for our own efforts and the goodness of Good Friday is not that Jesus was killed, certainly. The goodness of Good Friday is that Jesus refused to strike back when he was tempted to do so. Jesus said, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. John 10, verse 18. Jesus refused to abandon us to ourselves. And so he died so that we could die with him. And that is the only way we can find new life. At the beginning of funerals, we hear the words of Romans chapter 6, verse 3. Do you not know that all who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. 
Romans 6, verses 3 and 4. The only way we can live eternally is to live in the death of Christ. It is his death that becomes our life. I know that does not make sense outside of faith. Those words sound foolish, but living the life of faith, we know that death to self is life to Christ. God turned his heart toward those who wanted to take his place. Humankind has always had the power to take life, to destroy life, to end life, but we do not have the power to raise it up again. So we weep for ourselves. The powers we have are lamentable. God gave his life into the hands of sinners and we did not know what we were doing. If we had known, we would have given our lives over to God instead. Tonight we think of that again and we say we believe and that is enough. Our lives are in God's hands. And he sent Jesus to save us in death. This life is over. It is now all carried by the hands of God so that we can live again. Amen. We turn to hymn number 335. We sing, Jesus, keep me near the cross.
The following prayers are an ancient set of prayers that, uh, that were offered during some of the earliest years of Christian uh, gathered worship. We uh, pray these together and at uh, the appropriate time, uh, your response will be, will be asked. We continue as we pray. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, for the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that God, the Almighty Father, guide it and gather it together so that we may worship him in peace and tranquility. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. Guide the work of the church. Help it to persevere in faith, proclaim your name, and bring salvation to people everywhere. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And the people of God say amen. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Strengthen and uphold our pastors and leaders. Keep them in health and safety for the good of the church and help each of us to do faithfully the work to which you have called us. Let God's people say amen. amen. Let us take a moment of silence to pray for those preparing for baptism that God make them responsive to his love and give them new life in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Almighty and eternal God, you continually bless the church with new members. Increase the faith and understanding of those preparing for baptism. Give them a new birth as your children and keep them in faith and communion of your holy church. Let God's people say amen. amen. Let us take a moment of silence to pray for all our brothers and sisters who share our faith in Jesus Christ, that God may gather and keep together in one church all those who know Christ as Lord. Almighty and eternal God, you give your church its unity. Look with favor on all who follow Jesus, your son. We are all consecrated to you by our baptism Make us one in the fullness of faith and keep us one in the fellowship of love. Let God's people say amen. amen. Let us take a moment of silence to pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God, that they may re receive the fulfillment of the covenant's promises. Almighty and eternal God, long ago you gave your promise to Abraham and his posterity. Hear the prayers of your church that the people you first made your own may arrive with us at the fullness of redemption. Let God's people say amen. amen. Let us take a moment of silence to pray for those who do not believe in Christ that the light of the Holy Spirit may show them the way of salvation. Almighty and eternal God, enable those who do not acknowledge Christ to receive the truth of the gospel. Help us, your people, to grow in love for one another, to grasp more fully the mystery of your Godhead, and so to become more perfect witnesses of your love in the sight of all people. 
Let God's people say amen. Amen. Let us take a moment of silence to pray for those who do not believe in God, that they may find him who is the author and goal of our existence. Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity so that all might long to know you and have peace in you. Grant that in spite of the hurtful things that stand in their way, they may all recognize in the lives of Christians the tokens of your love and mercy and gladly acknowledge you as the one true God and Father of us all. Let God's people say amen. Let us take a moment of silence to pray for those who serve in public office that God may guide their minds and hearts so that all of us may live in true peace and freedom. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and oppressed. In your goodness, watch over those in authority so that people everywhere may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. Let God's people say amen. Amen. Let us take a moment of silence to pray that God the Almighty and merciful Father may heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty, and rid the world of falsehood, hunger, and disease. Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. Let God's people say amen. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask with the words he gave us in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hymn number 337.
We continue in prayer. Merciful God, your son was lifted up on the cross to draw all people to himself. Grant that we who have been born out of his wounded side may at all times find mercy in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the whole world. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the whole world. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the whole world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you.